Okay, we have a quick unboxing here from Vistaprint. I was waiting and waiting and waiting for a sale to come on for these postcards. I call them idea cards, and it never came, so I just ordered anyway. And guess what? There's a sale going on right now. <laughs> but I did order quite a few eh, different ones, I guess, but just a small quantity of each, so um, I don't know. This many postcards right here. Now, I know I'm talking a long time ago, but this many postcards right here used to cost maybe about $50, I don't know, whatever it was or something like that, 50 bucks maybe, $30. Now, this many, I don't know, they're so expensive. Now they're like, this is like a couple hundred dollars worth. But let's see what I ordered. I, I need to get some new ones produced. Um, but I just ordered some uh, previously made ones, uh, ordered ones, and I don't know. I mean, you kind of order ahead of time, you know, taking into consideration what people are stamping um, at a certain time of year. This one's kind of a, a Christmas card idea. This one's from Video 437. I don't know. These are my kind of pigment tests where I've added... A lot of uh, white and black pigment into one stamp and I've stamped out the impression of that variation right here. This one is supposed to look like it's um, transitioning from light to dark down here on this tree. And then I've stamped uh, the, the trees in the foreground again just in straight black okay to create that depth right there but kind of that transitioning um, value is something I'm always trying to do so it's transitioning from light to dark um, here, but in the tone in the background, it's transitioning from dark to light. You see how that's going? So it's going the opposite. This is light to dark, and this is dark to light down here. So, you know, the background in here is all light uh, in back of there. So, and then you sandwich all of that, okay, those first two layers, the first layer is just color dark to light, and you go light to dark, and then you just go dark right down here. Um, I don't know, for kind of a visual stability, having kind of the weight on the bottom to balance off that heavier kind of value weight up top. All right, get it? I talk about transitions all the time, and I need to do kind of a separate video on that sometime. Um, it's something that uh, people don't do a lot, but it's super easy to do, but it looks more complex because we're just used to coloring single value kind of areas. There, you know, I mean, not everyone. I mean, that's, you know, there's um, uh, braring and all that too. Okay, this one's a piece that um, was referencing a photograph posted on the Facebook Stampscapes group. A lot of um, kind of cherry trees at the foot of Mount Fuji. That's not Mount Fuji, but this is my kind of version of it. And this is back when I was using um, gel pens. And I, could, I still could, my gel pens still work, but I'm using more of the paint pen, um, acrylic paint pens these days. I, I, I just find the acrylic paint pens feed a little easier for me and they're super cheap so uh why not you know i don't feel kind of compelled to keep using the gel pens um unless i don't have a color in paint pen format there's still a lot of uh tones in uh, gel pens that just don't i don't know I, I don't think they're available in the paint pen format um Specifically, things like uh, metallics or iridescence or glitter pens. All right, here's another video lesson right here. Video 379, quick scenes. Okay, just laying down a lot of uh, quick colors down here. And again, transitions. See how this is going from dark to light in here, dark to light. So the transitions are always those types of things um, I'm talking about. And there's even transitions of color on this um, bridge right here. You see how it's going from kind of dark up here to light down here. So even in just a small little area, 
we have that transitioning tone. It's because all around us in nature, we see it all the time, but we don't, it doesn't always register because we're not looking for it. Like right here, there's a darker shadow right here, but as it transitions into light, it's not just a hard line, okay? You see how it's transitioning the shadow from dark to light right here? You know, Every, anywhere where I do this, where I create this shadow, there's a little bit of harder line right here, but there is a transition area like that. Okay, let's get this going right here. Um, let me just cut a few of these, like so. I waited to send out some orders because I wanted to include these cards in the uh, in with the orders. That's where these cards go out with orders. Okay, uh, the pink um, foliage in the tree. Okay, kind of springtime type of thing at the mill. And that was um, in the spirit of that previous one that I showed you. I don't know, I've, I've usually done these in fall colors, like, um, you know, oranges, reds, yellows, and things like that. But uh, uh, the pink, I don't know, the pink purplish type of thing was a real, I don't know, uh, kind of a breakout tweak, you know, just changing one little thing, changing the spirit of the overall piece. But like I said, these go out with orders. Some people see these videos and say, how can I get those? Well, they, they go out with any orders. So um, they're, they're supposed to be just kind of a compositional color, sometimes technique types of uh, um, ideas for people with their scenes. You know, if they have a cabin or something like that, it doesn't have to be the specific design. But it could be, I mean, certainly. Here you have the transitioning tones again. See, this is going from dark to light in here. Most people, when they're doing this type of thing in here, see this area, this area in here is all grass. They color it uniformly. They fill in like a coloring book or like a stained glass would be filled in completely. That can have its own look, but if you want to go for some kind of lighting variations, then you leave light within these spaces and you transition it from dark to light in there, okay, like that. And you leave just little bits of light. See how kind of three-dimensional that house looks? Because I've left the rooftop lighter than the vertical sides, okay? So what this entails in terms of a technique is it means doing less coloring, okay? Not more. You actually do less when you retain light of the paper. I know that people think that's very complex, but what it means is don't color in the whole thing. Just color in, you know? maybe the shadows or something like that. And you go into those lighter areas with your lighter colors, but you just don't go into it with your medium and darker tones. And then when you use those darker colors, it means that you're using them for shading as opposed to coloring, like a coloring book or something like that. All right, waterfalls. Retain the light areas of your falls, you know, usually that's the uh, churning water and it reflects a lot of light because it's full of oxygen. So most people would see something like that and they would color it in with like a blue. They're thinking water is blue. Well, water is really not blue. If you were looking at water during a sunset, it would look like the colors of the sunset because it's so reflective, okay. Churning waters, you know, under a blue sky or whatever, or even at nighttime under the moonlight would look very light like that, you know, because of all that oxygen and the reflective nature of that uh, kind of substance. So this one's an eight and a half by 11. I thought I would do something crazy. And I did a, uh, just a big stack of uh, waterfalls like that. Light beams like that. I want to do these light beams in a scene um, using my new kind of big, huge paint pens and whatnot, you know, and uh, Kind of a fall colored scheme, you know, using some origins and stuff like that. But I want to have these light beams coming through the, uh, the trees. And I thought these paint pens would be perfect for that. All right, let's see here. A lot of, uh, quite a few uh, postcards here. I need to place another order for those postcards because they're, I don't know. I don't know if the 50% the off sale at, at Vistaprint is done. I haven't seen that come up in quite some time. Any sale at all, but they're having like a 40% off. Oh, and postcards used to be that if they were kind of 
black and white printing on the reverse side. Black and white was free. Now they charge if there's any printing on the back, so I don't know. Everything's just gone up so much um, in the printing world, but uh, I don't know. It just seems like with everything. But we do want people to have some good ideas on how to uh, use their stamps and provide some inspiration as far as, um, you know, what I was mentioning, different color schemes, compositions, techniques, and whatnot. More of the light beams right here, okay? Do you see that transitioning tones going from dark to light? We just have this little area of light in here, but if that area in here was all filled in, you wouldn't really be able to see that sailboat very well. And here's all kinds of transitions going from kind of, you know, darker pink to lighter right up here. And from the edges, we have this purple coming in and transitioning to nothing, right? So it transitions, it's not just hard edge purple, and then nothing, it kind of transitions like that. The uh, the beams are really fun to add in and stuff like that too, because when things look kind of clunky, you know, in terms of my coloring techniques or whatnot, all I do is throw in some beams like that, and it pushes everything in the background farther back visually. And it hides, you know, basically. Um, you know, any kind of weakness. And believe me, there's a lot of weakness. And, of some areas because I don't take the time to you know perfectly blend things because I know that I can just add in a little bit of white pigment ink you know into areas like that and it just it just smooths and kind of incorporates everything and it looks good you know in addition to that so it not only hides but it enhances okay but transitions going from dark to light in here retaining the lighter areas like that retaining a lighter area of here See, some trees are darker than others. I mean, this is fall, so maybe those represent different types of trees too, but even in little bushy areas down here, see how I've retained some areas of light, some areas of dark. So you do that in all these little areas, and pretty soon you get this kind of shimmering surface like that, or a glowing surface with the oscillation of light and darks. Dark, light, dark, light, dark, light. Dark, light, dark, light, dark, light. Checkerboarding. I don't know, think about that term, in term that, that concept of checkerboarding, you know, um, your pieces. It doesn't mean everything has to be a uniform square or something like that, but it's just this oscillation of light and dark. So we go dark, light, dark. I'm talking about the background, not the birds, okay? So dark, light, dark, light, dark, light. And a slightly bit of darkness up here. See how that goes? So in other words, don't just see this as one whole thing. Coloring it all in, background, clouds, okay. You retain some light areas. So it just means putting on the brakes. And don't color everything in. And in the end, you're doing less work, not more, because you're not filling in the whole thing. It's more work in terms of your thought process, in terms of, you know, don't color everything in. you got to just hold, you know. But it's easy to do once you uh, start doing it. See this right here on my uh, little uh, covered bridge right here? It's darker back here and lighter up here. Most people would see this, and if they first start doing coloring, they're coloring in the whole thing. Okay, this color covered bridge is brown. Color in the whole thing brown, right? Well, how you do this is you just color in the whole thing tan, and then with your medium browns, you just kind of do it in certain areas and darker browns and even more of a limited area. This is photo stamping right here. And this is from video number 430, Last Light Bridge. If you want to watch that video, you can see what I started off with and how I added in all these little types of uh, embellishments and colored and whatnot. This big, huge line was in of darkness was in the photograph itself, and I just kind of worked around that um, uh, kind of uh, inherent um, photographic dynamic of, you know, using these shadows in here. Photo sampling is really fun. you got to try it out sometime if you haven't done that. Okay, so that is it. These postcards will be going out with orders. I don't send them out with my first class orders because I always try to keep those really lightweight, but if something's like 1.2 ounces, I fill up the envelope to the next uh, 2 ounce uh, mark because they're paying for that anyways. If, you, if anything's like a, point, uh, you know, a fraction of a 
an ounce over a certain thing, then it goes up to the next ounce. Okay, so anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.